Hello and uh, welcome to this meeting of the Planning and Development Council of the Town of Oakville. It's March 6th, 6.30 p.m. We have regrets from Councillor Duddick and uh, from Councillor O'Meara. And uh, we have a declaration of conflict of interest for item 6.2 from uh, Town Councillor for Ward 2, Ray Chisholm. Thank you, Worship. Uh, I'm declaring a conflict of interest because I was the past president of the Oakville Club and an, an existing member at this point in time. I appreciate you might be an interested party. Thank you. Um, are there any other declarations of, of uh, conflict or pecuniary interest? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Uh, would two of us like to move us into Committee of the Whole? Councillor Longo, Councillor McNeese, thank you. Any objection? There being no objection, that carries. And we're now in the uh, Committee of the Whole relaxed set of rules. And uh, uh, called Council's attention to the uh, three uh, public uh, consent items and look for a motion. Councillor Adams, thank you. Is there any objection to the consent items? Councillor Hazlitt Thiel. Um, Mayor Burton, I'd just like to separate 4.6 out. I have a question on it. 4. Point what? 4.6. Oh, sorry, 4.3. 4.3. Uh, may I call the vote on the remainder? Any objection to 4.1 and 4.2? There being none, they're carried. Councillor Hazlitt Thiel. Um, I, I just had some questions about the, the transit stream um, and the funding. Um, it's great that there is access to a, a we're going to get, I, I believe it's 1.9 million, um, but I'm I'd just like to understand when staff became aware of it, because to my knowledge, the budget committee was not aware of these funds when we, uh, when we deliberated on February 27th with council. So if somebody could just clarify that um, we, we were not advised of it before we, we made our final decision, that would be helpful. Councillor, um, I inquired about that at the time, and the commissioner told me that it made no difference to the budget and that the amount was uh, approximately what was expected. Uh, and so no, uh, uh, it, it had no impact on the budget. Okay, so, all right, thank you for that, Mayor Burton. Councillor Elgar. Yeah, uh, Mayor Burton, where, where is the money tucked away? So what revenue stream did it go into? It goes, well, why don't we, we ask about that at council when the relevant staff will be here? Uh, John Vanderheiden is here. Oh. Um, okay. Mr. Director Vanderheiden, can you help the councillors? Uh, good evening, Mayor Burton, and members of the council. Uh, so the funding for the items that you have before you this evening is actually related to expenses related to 2022 that have already been incurred. And since we don't have our year-end audit completed yet, we were actually able to make sure that this was all captured in the 2022 book, so there is no impact on the 2023 uh, budget for it. So was it in the revenue for 2022, the 1.9? Through you, Mayor Burton, once we finalize our 2022 books, it will be included in there, yes. Okay, so it wasn't in the eight. In, in what we received, though, the 33 million, which was the net difference between the, the, the as I recall, the, the operating and the revenue, it was a what was a 33 million dollar spread of which over was it 8.1 million was for revenues, and so the 1.9 was not in the 8.1 or whatever the it was eight something I remember. So through you, Mayor Burton, uh, the items that you're referring to, uh, Councillor Algar, are for the 2023 budget. These were funds that were right. received for expenditures we had already in 2022, and the province is simply reimbursing us for them. So, so was the money then in the 2022, because it was a net difference there of 29 million, as I recall. Through you, Mayor Burton, the funds that we're receiving for this are for the 2022 budget and, and would be included with our 2022 actual results. We're hoping to bring those final results to council at a future uh, council meeting. Oh, so it would be less than 29 then, if that's the case, because it wouldn't have been in. So what you're telling me is that 1.9 was not in the revenue portion of the 2022 budget. Uh, through you, Mayor Burton, 
So the funds that are before you, I don't think in our 2022 budget, we had counted on those specifically, but if you recall, our 2022 budget did count on some funding from other levels of government to assist us with COVID. Right. Uh, I think the m amount was about 5.7 million. I, I'm sorry, I don't remember the amount that was uh, transit specific. Okay, we can dig into that the next council meeting because I don't I don't have the budget numbers with me, but I think I think there was a, it was I think it was a spread of twenty nine million we were subsidizing. So I'm just so really then we might have, we might have only been twenty seven point something million we were sub that we were subsidizing for transit in twenty twenty two. Thank you, Councillor. Why don't we wait and see? Uh, the commissioner had led me to believe, if I remember it correctly, that. We had anticipated this money and the amount was very, very close to the anticipated amount. But in any event, as the director has explained, it has nothing to do with the 2023 budget. No, just a, but it is the bigger spread between what, we, what we're funding in 2023 versus 2022 by one, another, maybe maybe not, two, two more million more than the, than the amount we thought. So, okay. I'm happy to celebrate early if you want to. <laughs> All right, uh, I'll put the vote on uh, 4.3. Is there any objection? There being none, that too is consented to. Thank you very much. Uh, the, uh, the matter here is to receive the report and accept the money. So uh, I'm, I'm glad that we were willing to receive the money. Uh, the, we have two public hearing items uh, tonight. They're both of the type where the purpose is to hear from the public and members of council and uh, add to the issues to be considered by the planning staff when they are working on a recommendation report later. The, uh, uh, so to the extent that uh, members of council and members of the public can shape their remarks uh, in the form of a list of issues, uh, the planning staff will be assisted in, uh, and, uh, and the public and the council will, be, will benefit from having the matter uh, crisply worded and, uh, and, um, and more susceptible of being treated or dealt with by the, uh, by the planning staff. Um, the first public hearing item is the public meeting report for Support House at 130 Cornwall Road. We have uh, a presentation from Nancy Friday, the senior planner with the GSP group, and we have staff available for questions. And if anyone is watching the live stream of this meeting on Oakville CA who wishes to speak to this item, by calling 905-815-6095, we'll connect you to the meeting. You'll be called upon to speak following the registered delegations, of which we have none. Uh, Ms. Friday, we look forward to your presentation. Hello, Mayor Burton. I'm uh, Tim Welch. I'm not Nancy Friday. Uh, from GS uh, I'm from TWC. We're an affordable housing development consulting group working with Support House on this development. And just to introduce Nancy from GSP planning firm. And also we have uh, Paul Gregory from Support House to speak this evening to the slides. Could you get closer to the microphone? And could Certainly. The, could, the, could the technical whizzes in back uh, uh, help us with the volume level on the mic? Thank you. Sorry, there's a volume, uh, does this help leaning forward? Okay, great, thanks very much. Um, so we're just uh, doing a brief presentation this evening about the proposed development of Support House on 130 Cornwall Road. Next slide, please. So just to give council members a, a photo from the air on uh, the Google Earth view, as they say, uh, this is a, a property on Cornwall Road directly across from the very large GO Train parking station. Um, and it's been a building there for about 40 years that would, that support house is looking to make better use of the land in the community in terms of helping meet the affordable and supportive housing needs uh, to, uh, to redevelop this site. And maybe I'll just ask Paul to talk a little bit about the organization, just to give councillors a little more background about the um, support house and the, the, the history in the community. Paul? Thanks, Tim. Support house has been a neighbour in uh, Oakville for quite a period of time. Um, families got together in 1984 or 1982 to, to purchase a house in 1984 uh, as supportive housing for their 
um, adult children at the time who had mental health and addictions issues. And certainly um, we've been, uh, I think it was an apple orchard way back when on, on Chartwell Road. And we acquired Grace House um, later in, uh, in, 19, uh, in, sorry, in um, to 20, 2014, sorry. It was built though in 1999. So we've been a supportive housing provider for quite some time in the, in the neighborhood. We're funded by Ontario Health, formerly the Lynn, um, the region of Halton and United Way. Our buildings are operated um, based on the safety of uh, the residents and based on the safety of the community. We certainly work uh, hand in glove with uh, hospitals, uh, police, and our other community mental health uh, partners. Uh, in this particular model, Grace House was a, is a 10 bed congregate setting and it's outgrown its usefulness to us in terms of the privacy and dignity of the people that we want to house. Um, during COVID, it taught us one thing around congregate setting is that we don't want to do congregate setting anymore. Uh, and certainly uh, we progressed to have uh, the need for private units for people who are in our housing and our supportive housing. And so that's one of the reasons we decided to intensify this particular site. Um, just the last piece, I just wanted to say that um, we have been a, a charitable group since 1984. Um, we have a, a nonprofit board, uh, partners, volunteers, um, and we're governed by that board. We're also accredited um, by Accreditation Canada and um, we're also um, working in lock and step with our Ontario health partners now. Thank you. Sorry, if we could move up uh, the next two slides, please. I think, uh, Paul talked about support house. And just to, at a very high level in terms of the concept plan is to, again, to make more efficient use of the land that's there, to create um, 37 self-contained apartment units, those small size uh, for individuals. But as Paul mentioned, a lot of the people that support house have been supporting are in shared accommodation. So it will be very nice for the individuals to have their own private space. Uh, there still remains to be a fair bit of a uh, good uh, landscape area. There'll be uh, amenity space, gathering space for the residents on the ground floor of the building, uh, bicycle parking. Uh, there's been lots of discussion with uh, town staff over uh, really the last two years in terms of uh, this will allow uh, road widening to be dedicated to, uh, to the town. And uh, we also had good conversations with the Conservation Authority. Uh, we are close to the, uh, uh, to the, uh, the creek in terms of making sure that the uh, footprint that we are putting on uh, does not interfere with the uh, long-term stable top of bank. Uh, so there's an adequate setback uh, in terms of dealing with some of the questions that the Conservation Authority raised earlier. Nancy? Next slide, please. Now into the uh, planning, uh, official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment application. Um, the official plan amendment, one component is to correct um, a sort of a mapping error in terms of the full extent of that orange area you see there, that's a high density residential. So you might see in your um, literature or documents, it's a town initiated official plan amendment to just extend that orange area just a little bit further to the east to capture what is actually zoned high density residential. So that's one component of the official plan amendment. The other one is to add a special policy uh, to livable Oakville um, with 37 affordable units in the five-story building. The density actually does exceed that in the official plan for high density. And primarily we look at that as a factor of the small units. If the units were double in size, like a thousand square feet or so, it would meet the density. But in seniors housing or supportive housing, affordable housing, you're seeing those smaller units, which then results in higher um, density. So that is the component of the official plan that we are seeking to amend. Next slide, please. So the, the site is currently designated for high density residential. Um, there is a bit of a special exception there. And uh, that is for when Sunrise was built and, and Grace House was built. Um, there's special provisions in the bylaw now for those two buildings. So the redevelopment um, to put a larger, a little bit larger footprint, not that much larger on, on the uh, Grace House site, requires us to modify the front yard. 
there's a road widening that's required and it's impossible to meet the six meter front yard. So it has, uh, there's a request that it be reduced to three meters, which would be a landscape strip. The easterly side yard, that's um, a, the yard that's adjacent to where the parking area is. Um, the maximum floor area was set for Grace House. It was specific to Grace House, which is about 5,000 square feet, I believe, right now. So we need to modify that in the site-specific zoning as well to allow for a maximum floor area that's greater. And parking. Under the zoning bylaw, uh, given the size of the building, the amount of parking that's required would exceed what is actually required. Um, the residents typically do not have a vehicle. Um, they probably will not have a vehicle, so that's, uh, there's no parking required for the residents. Um, so these seven spots that are provided are for staff and for visitors. So we need a modification to the zoning to allow that as well. Next slide, please. Thanks again, Nancy. Um, just to also, we try to undertake as good practice, of course, is to outreach to neighbours in advance of uh, a time when we're uh, before council. Uh, so we did host a public meeting last year. Um, we had 11 attendees, a modest, modest turnout, I'd say, in terms of the meeting. We talked about uh, the, the concept. Um, we had some questions from, uh, from some of the neighbours, particularly in the, uh, uh, one of the condo associations not too far away. Um, a number of questions about the building design, uh, the layout. We're trying to have a good, vibrant-looking um, building to be created. Um, questions were asked about, you know, are there staffing? Yes, there are support staff on the, uh, on the building. About how large the increase, and it's, it's actually, although it's a larger number of units and some more height, it's not a lot larger in terms of the building footprint that exists right now on the site. Um, we had some discussions, some back and forth discussion about the unit sizes. And again, we emphasize that for the residents who will be moving in there are going to be moving mostly from shared accommodation. And again, there was a lot of, as Paul talked about, the importance of having private space, private washrooms for the residents, uh, a little bit of a kitchen area as well. So those are all a very positive step up for the residents who are moving into the building. Um, and again, we had questions about was there any impact in terms of the adjacent parkland uh, space or conservation space, and we clearly stated no, that's not going to be impacted by this development. Um, so it was, uh, like I said, it was a good discussion um, with some questions, very open back and forth, but uh, uh, I think we got fairly positive feedback from the, uh, the neighbours who did appear, and um, we're, we're here to keep moving forward. Nancy, just final uh, word to you. Next, next slide, please. Yeah, just to conclude, I hope we're within the 10 minutes here. Um, uh, oh, okay, so it's covered up a bit. But uh, the official plan and zoning bylaw amendments uh, were deemed complete in January of this year. And as, as I said, the official plan amendment that the applicant is initiating is, is for uh, additional uh, density. So uh, I had put a point here that only 19 units could be provided at the maximum, maximum of 185 units per hectare. So we're going up to the 37. Um, the existing zoning, uh, as I said, does not contemplate um, the, max, the maximum floor area was set based on the Grace, Grace House that is there. So we're asking for some site-specific modifications to the high density zone. Uh, a lot, we have received a fair amount, a fair number of comments, um, a couple of comments missing from staff, but we're getting feedback, good feedback from town staff on various matters. And I think part of the, the, a lot of the comments coming in are site plan related because we have prepared detailed architectural drawings at this stage as opposed to at the site plan stage. So we're, we're gearing up to move forward to get site plan approval eventually, hopefully, and also building permit to get these uh, affordable housing units built. Um, so that concludes the presentation. Happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, members of council. Thank you very much for a very detailed presentation. Members of council, do you have questions? Councillor Ilger. Thank you, thanks for the presentation. Right now, are you locked in at six stories? And the reason I say that, I understand the Argus Medical Center will have to move out of where it is and they cannot get government funding unless they're within so many kilometers of their existing location. Like they, they can't move up to uh, around the hospital now. 
even though if there's property available because it's outside of the five kilometers or, or it's all about the funding. Like, what, do, would you consider a six, sto a six story so the lower level would be a medical center in that location? Or is that too late at this point for your application? So is there a, a six story? Sorry. No, like I'm thinking an extra story. So on the bottom story, you would have medical. Ah. Um, part of it is is uh, funding, or that planning is really important. Funding is also really important in terms of making sure the project's viable. Support House has been working with uh, the region of Halton on for funding support for this new development. Um, that we hadn't actually contemplated that that option, uh, and I guess that would get us into a different planning and. I would guess that one of the other challenges that would be would would be parking, okay. um, as was mentioned. That the residents here get an income of about 1,100 a month. Uh, they have to pay rent out of that, and there's no cars uh, of that. So I know that's a, a challenge we've been working through successfully with planning staff about the reality of parking. And I would think if it's a, a public medical office, that would have a lot more parking requirements than yeah, on this. But combinations are good ideas, certainly. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much. Councillor Chisholm. Thank you, Your Worship. Just a couple of quick questions with respect to the development. Um, uh, you've indicated site-specific um, changes. Now you've got you've got the zoning uh, amendment, and you also you got an official plan amendment coming through. I guess maybe this question is more for uh, the director with respect to once, if and when it is approved. Would there be variances that would be coming forward to change frontage, flankage, and so forth? Would there have to be variances required of the applicant? Through you, Mr. Mayor. Any uh, changes to the zoning we would want to incorporate at this point so that we can build it right into the zoning bylaw that okay. council would be seen as opposed to doing it in a future process. Great. Thanks very much. Thank you, Councillor Chisholm. Councillor Giddings. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Following up on the questions regarding parking, the seven spaces, is that for the current staffing level or is that the anticipated staffing level? Just curious, I, I, I'm well aware of the area and the challenges in terms of finding parking there. I appreciate that the residents uh, will be making use of Oakville Transit. Just curious in terms of the parking. It, it's for the anticipated staff levels, thanks. Good stuff, thank you. Anyone else? Councillor Chisholm for another time? Okay, thank you. Are there members of the public with information for council or issues to identify? Madam Clerk, have any, has anyone phoned in? No phone ins, but there is a. Oh, a yes. Please uh, come forward, identify yourself, and share your, your issue or concern. I'm Jane Huddleston. Ms. Huddleston. I'm with Welcome. the uh, TCRA, and we talked about this this morning and just to see if we had any issues with it, and the only thing that was raised was the, the park and the possible loss of any green space. As you know, we've been pushing for more green space in Midtown, and when I look at that first drawing that went up there, the red line that went around, that trail is heavily used, people coming from the west, people from Old Mill, and just generally people in the area, people from Sunrise even visiting with family. And uh, uh, there are, there's a sitting area, and then there's the trail that cuts across to just above Inglehart. And that's the part that's really heavily used. And when I, even if the footprint won't change a great deal, as was mentioned, if you have a six-story building, if you have a six-story wall beside the trail, it dramatically changes the, uh, the atmosphere of the trail. So that is just a concern that, that we sort of looked at this morning. And then when I see that, that drawing with the red line of where the footprint would be, it further raises that concern. All right, so uh, is TCRA suggesting that the additional heights should not be permitted? I can't speak for the entire TCRA. As I said, we had a, a meeting this morning, and, and uh, or we had an online uh, discussion this morning about it, uh, just to see if there was anything to raise at the meeting tonight. And we, we support the, uh, you know, what's being done here uh, for this type of housing. But that green space was something that concerned us if the footprint got bigger. And I, I heard 
that the footprint wasn't going to get bigger, but on the red lines that I saw on that drawing, it just looks like it will make a wall along the trail, which makes a big difference to the trail. And I'm, I'm hoping to hear what you want done as a result of that well, observation. Well, uh, I was hoping planning staff might have some answers that, as to what can be done, but we certainly don't want to take away green space that's, that's used and uh, green space that's needed in Midtown. Is there a suggestion here of a loss of green space? Well, not a loss of green space, but a loss of the ambience in the green space and the reason that it's used. And sadly, the reason that that trail is used so much is that it's safer to jaywalk at Trafalgar and Inglehart than it is to cross the intersection at Trafalgar and Cornwall. And so that's where the people are going on that trail, but it's a nice scenic way to go. All right, well, thank you very much for bringing your information forward. Okay, you're welcome, thank you. Anyone else? Madam Clerk, any call-ins? Councillor Hazlitt-Deal. Thank you, Mayor Burton. Um, I just wanted, under the matters under review, it talks about um, the, uh, uh, it talks about the interface with the public realm. Um, and is staff going to therefore just confirm that the trail is uh, the usability of the trail as part of that review? Yeah, through Mayor Burden, through the uh, comments that have been received thus far, park staff have confirmed that they will be reviewing the, the walkway that interfaces with the, the property and how there's potential connections with the park that was just aforementioned. All right, thanks very much. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Council, I see no further questions or comments. Um, and therefore, I'll turn to Director Charles and uh, ask what, what issues, if any, he's added to the department's list of uh, matters on this file. Yeah, through you, Mayor Burton, I was taking notes. And further to the matters that were raised in the staff report, um, in terms of other matters to be addressed at a future recommendation meeting, Staff will report back on a potential medical center use, uh, the special provisions that have been proposed at this point, uh, the parking spaces in terms of the anticipated staff level and the park uh, lands to the west and potential loss of green space and the walkway on the town lands. Thank you. Has anybody got anything else? Councillor Chisholm. Thank you, Worship. The only concern I have, and I know we don't have uh, the authority on site plan applications, but uh, being atop a bank, I would have some concerns about the safety of the, uh, the uh, tenants and residents with respect to uh, the drop off. Uh, so I'm hoping within that, the plans, it's a consideration to look at fencing or proper uh, um, fencing that will be safe for the uh, tenants in that building. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chisholm. Uh, would one of you like to give the indicated motion to receive the comments from the public and the Councillor Giddings? Thank you. Any objection? There being none, that carries. Thank you, Councillor Giddings. There, okay, Council and public, that was your warm up uh, for the big event tonight. I call it the big event because we have four registered delegations, and of course, we open the uh, microphone and the floor to any additional who may decide in the course of the meeting to join. And if you're not here, but watching online, 905-815-6095 will connect you to the meeting and, and you'll get your turn as well. Um, we have a presentation from David Fay of David Fay Associates and Richard Wengel, the architect, and staff will be available for questions. Good evening, Your Worship, uh, members of council, staff. I'm here this evening on behalf of Roseville Properties with respect to a property on Robinson Street and Water Street. And we're looking for feedback from council and any other delegations there may be with respect to the uh, proposal that's going to be put before you this evening. Can you hear me okay? So this is a statutory public meeting with respect to a proposed zoning bylaw amendment, 106 to 114 Robinson Street and 71 Water Street. The owner is Roseville Properties, Inc. Next slide, please. 
the location of the property, and I'm going to use the normal Oakville uh, reference to the Lake Ontario being to the south, so that my directions will make some sense. So we have the location on the south side of Robinson Street, between Navy Street and Water Street. The size of the site is 0 .4, 0 0.403 of an acre. Uh, there is one feature with respect to the property that is very important for the siting of the future residential units, and that is there is a great difference between Navy Street and Water Street across this site of approximately seven meters. And if you're familiar with the site, it's quite obvious that there is that great difference. The yellow line, Heritage Conservation District, that you can see in the slide, that yellow line is the boundary for the Oakville Heritage Conservation District. Sorry, Old Oakville Heritage Conservation District. And you can see it abuts the property for approximately half the length of the property and then uh, zigzags around the uh, Oakville Club parking lot. With respect to surrounding uses, to the north we have the Granary Mixed Use Building and also the designated Heritage Building, which can be seen in the slide just to the right of the uh, turnaround entrance to the Mixed Use Building. Centennial Square is a little further to the north across Lakeshore Road East and the downtown business district is uh, just a block away. To the east, we have the Murray House, which is labeled on the slide, a designated heritage property. And further to the east, low density and medium density housing along Robinson Street. To the south is 68 and 70 Navy Street, a designated heritage property. That property, as you may know, is currently under uh, reconstruction or um, uh, perhaps even a totally new house being built on the property. Uh, I would question the heritage uh, uh, designation given what is happening on that property. Uh, low density residential uses further to the south, the Oakville Club and the Oakville Club parking lot to the south and to the west. The extreme west, we have the 16 Mile Creek and a further parking area owned by the Oakville Club. Next slide, please. With respect to the official plan, the lands, as you can see from the arrow, are currently designated medium density residential. They have that. Uh, medium density residential color, partly obscured by the uh, black target on the property, which is there for a specific reason. So the medium density residential, which is the current designation, does permit townhouses as a building form on the site. The official plan permits 13 units on the site and that is part of the uh, circle on the property. It's a provision in the official plan in part E, section 27.2.1, that uh, provides for that 13 dwelling units maximum. <coughs> so because of those provisions, an official plan amendment is not required for the proposed use on the site. The existing zoning is residential medium four, special provision 16, which permits a 13 unit apartment building with underground parking accessed from Water Street. The proposal before you this evening with the rezoning is to rezone from the RM4 to a residential medium one or RM1 zoning to permit 10 townhouse units with underground parking accessed from Water Street. I should mention that the zoning standards for the RM1 zone will require some special provisions. Uh, 
to facilitate construction of the 10 townhouse units, and we'll be working those matters out with town staff over the next short while before coming back to you, I hope, with a recommendation report later this spring. Mr. Wengel is going to take over the next three slides, and I shall return shortly. Thank you. If we can just skip the next one and go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So this is a proposal uh, for a three-story townhouse uh, building with the frontages along Robinson and uh, Navy Street. There are 10 units. Um, we have units that step down from Navy down to water through the topography change of approximately seven meters. The underground, as we said, is accessed off of Water Street, and we are providing two spaces per unit. And units one to six, which are on the right, are called the narrow deep lots, which will be approximately 3,000 feet each. And units seven to 10 on the left-hand side will be wide shallow units at approximately 2,550 feet each. Each will have its own rear yard and as well a roof terrace. If we can go to the next page, please. These are just some uh, views from the 3D modeling. The top left-hand corner just shows the view along Robinson showing the slope and the houses, each individual townhouse reacting to the slope, working with it as opposed to a straight line. It does follow the topography. On the right is a view from uh, Water Street looking up Robinson and just shows the articulation of the dormers, the mansard roof style and the change of materials using uh, stone and brick. And on the bottom left-hand corner, the units that we've designed will complement the old Oakville Heritage Conservation District, again, in a traditional style. And on the bottom right-hand corner, just as a view from Water Street showing the rear terraces and yards with the access uh, from Water Street to the underground parking, which will go underneath the terraces for the first few units and then become at-grade backyards with landscaping and privacy screens to the right. Next slide, please. This will just show a comparison in red is the envelope for the previous approved apartment that had a three meter setback between the property line at 68 and 70 Navy Street. We've increased that to 7.1 meters setback and approximately nine meters between building faces. You'll see also the height of the approved um, building originally is a lot more than we are asking for and we're just showing this particular elevation on the east showing the three-story where you'll see two stories plus a mansard roof with dormers into it. Um, our townhouse unit height is 12.4 whereas 14.2 was actually permitted in the previous scheme and uh, I can answer any questions. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for the uh, presentation. Mm -hmm. Members of Council, do you have questions? David has one more. One more slide. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Your Worship, I have uh, two more slides to... Mr. Fay, I didn't mean to cut you off. Please Thank carry you. on. So this slide is uh, dealing with the public information meeting that we held in April of 2022. Invitations were sent via Canada Post and through email uh, to area within 240 meters of the Roseville property site. 32 persons attended the public information meeting, including the councillors uh, Hazard Thiel and Giddings, the ward councillors, and uh, Brendan Hassan of the planning department uh, attended virtually as well. Uh, David Fay provided a presentation of the zoning amendment application you're hearing about this evening. And uh, I think overall, the response to the rezoning proposal was very positive. We had questions and comments which touched on matters such as the height of the townhouses, access to the underground parking from Water Street, which as you know is one way, and uh, uh, there'll be further discussion with the town of Oakville with respect to that particular aspect. The height of the Murray House building across Navy Street, the width of the proposed underground parking garage driveway, the setback of the townhouse buildings along Robinson Street, and ventilation required for the underground parking. Next slide, please. So thank you very much for your time. We look forward to your comments and are available to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll call for questions, uh, but uh, and Councillor Giddings will answer. Councillor Giddings. Thanks for coming out. Uh, couple of questions. 
we had gone through this briefly before in terms of traffic and parking and the use of Water Street um, in terms of ingress and egress. Are you any further with that? No, it's a matter that we still have to deal with staff on. All right, we'll so we're doing that shortly. Working on that one. All right, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Giddings. I was going to say that, uh, Mr. Fay, your last slide uh, identified five or six issues, I didn't count them, that uh, clearly will be part of the recommendation, well, part of the work that staff will do to bring us a recommendation report. Um, does any member of council have an additional issue to add to those? Councillor McNeese. Yeah, just to clarify. So this is essentially, uh, through your worship, uh, maybe to staff, uh, this is a down zoning application. So we're going down from um, the current zoning to reduce the density. Is that a fair uh, assessment? Uh, that's correct, from 13 to 10. Okay, yeah, we don't see these too often. Okay, thank you. All right, anyone else? Seeing none, may I call the delegations? Council has a deal, do you have any? Here, Burton, I'd like to hear the delegations first. All righty. Thank you. Madam Clerk, would you call the registered delegations, please? First delegation is George Niblock from board member and past chair of the Oakville Lakeside Residents Association. Welcome, Mr. Niblock. We look forward to your information. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> so first, I just wanted to address the, uh, the ingress and egress uh, to the parking on Water Street. Um, the way it's arranged right now, Water Street is one way, sorry, w uh, you access from William Street coming down past the Oakville Club, one way. Uh, <clears throat> we think this should remain one way. And then we think from Water Street, there should be a two-way section to the street so you can enter to the building parking and possibly to the Oakville Club parking from Water Street rather than going around through the Heritage District. So a two-way system there, ending just beyond you know, the townhouses or at um, the Oakville Club parking lot. So that's our first issue. The second is, I, I just wanted to understand, uh, this will not require um, site uh, plan application? I would expect that it would. It's, uh, it's completely within the distance of the lake and the river. Uh, the planning director affirms that. Okay, thank you. Um, because one other issue we had with the site is it doesn't seem to allow for any trees. There's no kind of buffer zone between the uh, site and the properties to the south, the Heritage District to the south to allow for any trees whatsoever. There seemed to be screening along the uh, balconies and the parking, but uh, no landscaping in terms of trees, left space left for that. The other big concern is um, in terms of the architecture with respect to the Heritage District, because this is really, um, a transitional zone, if you will, budding, abutting the Heritage District. The house to the south, which was mentioned, which is being rebuilt, is being rebuilt uh, purely because it was uh, condemned, foundation wasn't good enough, but it's a replica at the front of uh, the Heritage House that stood there previously. And uh, furthermore, you have three Heritage designated properties uh, adjacent this property, the granary, the old granary building, uh, and then there's two on the corners of Navy and Robinson, <clears throat> and then a whole heritage neighborhood to the south. So our concern with the architecture is that um, it, it, it has nothing really to do with the Oakville vernacular. You know, a mansard roof fronting on Water Street uh, stone at the lower level and then brick at the second floor and then a mansard roof that's sort of fake at the top um, is, is not part of the Oakville vernacular. It, it doesn't complement uh, or respect the Heritage District to the south. <coughs> Further to that, the rear elevation of the property, um, there's sort of no architecture. Uh, that mansard roof disappears, we don't have don't seem to have elevations that were presented, but uh, 
essentially you look at the rooftop patios from the south. And we don't really have a sense of how tall this building is going to be. But the sense is we will very much see it from the Heritage District. Um, particularly, there's no trees. And you'll just be looking at a flat roof situation with uh, open uh, rooftop patios, presumably because they want a view of the lake. But the view from the Heritage District is going to be compromised. Um, so there is a, another example of where this has been done on Robinson Street to the east. Um, and rooftop patios happen there. It's, in our opinion, a major failure of the architecture on that project uh, on Robinson Street to the south. Um, <clears throat> what are shown very discreetly in the drawings are big dog houses on the, the roof where the elevators take you up to the rooftop patios. And those um, are actually extremely prominent when you look at the building uh, further down the street. And I believe they will be here as well, uh, particularly from the south in the Heritage District, because there's, uh, they're not disguised by any false uh, mansard roofs. The other thing is, with this project, they actually have uh, space and they have main floor patios that people actually use, because it's off their living space. Uh, so we really don't think that um, rooftop decks are even necessary uh, in this, in this uh, on this site. And I think it will be a real detriment. It's a detriment to the look of the building architecturally and then to the heritage district to the south and the other heritage properties that are adjacent to this one. And the other thing I would just mention is there was a submission by uh, a resident um, within our district, uh, which goes through a number of uh, issues with the property that would be relevant for uh, site plan as well and uh, input from Heritage down the road. Uh, Jane, Jane uh, Hawkridge sent a letter. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Niblick, for your presentation. Are there questions for Mr. Niblick? Councillor Giddings? Thank you, Mr. Merck. Uh, Mr. Nibble, you just mentioned site plan as, as one of the concerns. So uh, what we weren't sure is with the changes to Bill 23, whether this property being under 10 units would qualify for site plan. Thank you for that, Mr. Mayor. And you mentioned the proximity to 16 Mile Creek. Could we ask staff for clarity on that? The staff report talks about a site plan application not being required. Mr. Hassan? Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, site plan applies for 10 units and above, is our, has been our interpretation. So we'll certainly take that back and be absolutely sure when uh, we bring you a recommendation report. Mr. Nedlick, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk, the next uh, d registered delegation, please. Next delegation is Rick Madigan, agent for Ms. John Janice Johnston, and he is virtual. So we will bring him in. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor Burton and members of, uh, of council. Uh, my name is Rick Mitchell, as, 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 as indicated, I represent Ms. Janice Johnson. 
Johnston, who's the uh, owner of the properties to the south, 68 and 70, the ones that, that have, been, have been mentioned before. Um, I've actually sent a letter to council uh, that outlines some concerns that my client had with this, uh, this, uh, this development, but I really would just like to talk about one tonight. And it was one that was actually, that has already been mentioned by Mr. Niblock. Uh, and that being the uh, absence in the proposed development of any uh, landscape buffer between the proposed development and the Heritage Conservation District to the, uh, to the south. Um, council may be aware that at the time of the previous development, there were significant discussions um, that surrounded the, uh, the requirement and the, and, the, and the benefit to the Heritage uh, Conservation District of, of a landscape buffer with the result that what happened was, was that at that time, three meters of land was severed off of the 70 Navy Street property and given to the development um, with the proviso that that three meters of land be used for uh, to the, the creation of a, of a landscape strip. Um, and that was in fact put into the zoning bylaw. So the existing, zo the existing zoning bylaw on the site requires that three meter landscape strip. I realized that with the, uh, with the application for zoning bylaw, bylaw um, amendment, that of course can be, can, be, can be changed at this point, but I would like to point out to council uh, my feeling and my client's feeling that in fact that landscape strip is a very important feature, a very important element. It defines, uh, and, and not just from the standpoint of my client's property, but that uh, what it does is it provides a, a, a firm dividing line between the uh, Heritage Conservation District and, and, the, and the development, the proposed development to the north. And, um, and we feel that in fact that, that landscape strip could be implemented um, without uh, significant um, uh, requirement for any kind of re redesign or without any significant hardship to the developer. Um, I'd like to point out that in fact, we have made our concerns known to the developer uh, we, we have had meetings with the developer to uh, indicate those concerns. Uh, I believe those, those conversations have been fruitful. Uh, we thank the developer for meeting with us. And um, I believe that we uh, have some common, common ground with the developer and I look forward to, to uh, some agreement with them. And I hope and I believe that we'll be in a position to, um, to, uh, to be supportive of the, of the development as it, as it goes forward. But our request to, to council and to staff is that they consider the, the importance of that, uh, of, that, uh, of that landscape buffer and that they work with us and work with the development uh, to implement that. So that's my presentation to council. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Madelgen, for, for what, what might very well be uh, good news. Councillor Hazlitt-Deal has uh, a question for you. Thank you for your delegation. I just want to look to staff and to the applicant um, for clarity. I saw on a slide that it talked about 7.1 meter uh, buffer, not a three meter buffer. Um, so if staff or the applicant could just clarify, is the application providing um, at least the three meters um, and a greater amount now that could be landscaped um, to address the tree uh, canopy concern? Yeah, so you Mayor Byrne, if we can pull up the slide again, I can attempt to answer the question. The site plan would be best to illustrate the uh, the rear yard setback. Yeah, so go back one. Yeah, so the terrace areas are where the 7.1 meter setback would be. The three meter landscape buffer, I believe, was a result of a consent application prior to the apartment building being approved in the past, and that was to accommodate the landscape buffer for a row of trees between the subject lands and the uh, 6870 Navy Street property. So there is it. So this three meters is protected is in fact is 7.1 now? Yes, it's uh, three meter burden is integrated into the 7.1 meter setback. So you'd, you'd have the three meters that was previously there and then the terrace is in excess of that, of an additional four meters of a setback. But again, there's no landscape strip um, in terms of trees that's uh, shown on this plan. And is that because we haven't got to that part of the, the process at this point? Uh, well, through you, Mayor Burton, it has been brought up in the staff comments um, and in the public comments that, again, going back to that consent application, that part was added to the subject lands in order to accommodate the, uh, the plantings. Okay. So it sounds to me like you did have some fruitful discussions. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so thank you for clarifying that for the public. Those are my questions, Mayor Burton. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you call the next delegation? 
The next delegation is Patricia Waitley. She's in person. Patricia Waitley. Anybody named Patricia anything? Madam Clerk, I... All right, then is the, there another delegation you'd like to call? The next delegation is Peter Callahan, Director and Chair of the Facilities Committee for the Oakville Club. Welcome, Mr. Callahan. Council looks forward to your information. Thank you very much. Good evening, Mayor Burton, and members of Council. Mr. Callahan, could you do us a favor and address the microphone? Yes, I will. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much. <clears throat> yes, my name is Peter Callahan, and I appear on behalf of the Oakville Club. Uh, I'm a member of the Board of Directors, and I'm also currently serving as chair of the Facilities Committee at the club. And as many of you know, the Oakville Club is a vibrant and uh, an active athletic and social club with over 1,200 members. We're located along the east bank of the 16 Mile Creek and have operated from that location since 1907, so just a little more than 115 years. As you also know, we're located at 56 Water Street, immediately adjacent to the proposed development, and right across the street, uh, across Water Street, we also share a common property boundary. We first learned about the proposed bylaw change following the community meeting held in the spring of 2022. Following that meeting, we had some concerns, we reached out to the owner developer to have a discussion about those concerns. And we subsequently sent a written submission on August 12th, 2022, uh, setting out the concerns and writing to the town. So we have set, uh, I have several items of concern tonight, six in, uh, to be specific, and uh, I'll address them in order. Uh, the first is we're concerned about the increase in the vehicular traffic along Water Street, down William Street and along Water Street. And as you, it's been mentioned already, uh, that, that set of streets is a one-way, uh, uh, has one-way traffic at the moment. And um, certainly by far the majority of the people attending uh, the Oakville Club come in through the Water Street, or the William Street Water Street entrance. There's also some parking up on King Street and you can access the property by that means, but by far the majority of people come down William and across Water Street. <clears throat> As you can see from the schematics that have been shown, our parking lot is located on the east side of Water Street, about 100 feet from the front entrance of the Oakville Club. Members and guests, therefore, must walk along, uh, south along Water Street to get to the front entrance to the club. This includes people of all ages, of course, seniors, as well as small children uh, who are exiting cars in the parking lot and walking to either the club or to the pool, the entrance to the pool area. There's no sidewalk on Water Street, so people are required to walk along the roadway. With 10 additional units being proposed and assuming two cars per unit, as I understand it, there are two parking spots at least per unit, That'll result in a substantial increase in the vehicular traffic along both the west end of William Street and the north of, uh, end of uh, Water Street, or going north on Water Street. So we have significant concerns for the safety of our members as a result of this significant increase in traffic in this area. It seems to us on consideration that perhaps the only solution for the, the issue of the parking entrance to this development proposal, or proposed development, which is on Water Street, is to come off of Navy Street and trying to create the entrance and exit at that location. The second issue is this. The developer's proposed access point is to the below grade parking is off Water Street, as we've heard. Given the current one-way restriction on Water Street, that will result in the significant increase in volume that I've talked about. There's also been a proposal that Water Street be changed to two-way traffic, coming from Robinson Street going south on Water Street. That would require a change in the current uh, restriction, and we strongly object to that. 
Water Street, for starters, is not wide enough to accommodate two-way traffic. First of all, it's irregular in size. There's street parking on the west side that we utilize daily uh, because we have a parking issues of our own in that area. <clears throat> Furthermore, the entrance to the below grade parking is only about 20 feet from the northernmost en uh, entrance exit uh, to the parking lot for the Oakville Club. So you've got in the, in the span of about 50 or 60 feet, three entrances into parking spaces along that very short roadway. And our members typically leave the Oakville Club parking lot through the northernly, the northernmost uh, exit, which again is only 20 feet away from the proposed entrance to the underground parking. What that require, would, would mean then is <clears throat> if the street were going <clears throat> two directions, cars coming north on Water Street would be on the right side of the road and people entering the townhomes would come from the to, uh, south from Robinson Street and, and would have to cross in front of the traffic that's going north in order immediately after, just about immediately after coming off of Robinson Street in order to get into the parking garage. <clears throat> It also poses a problem with people coming up out of the uh, below grade parking and out onto Water Street and appearing suddenly as cars are coming north on, the, on Water Street. It may also point out that heavy delivery trucks use that street for deliveries to the Oakville Club. And once again, it seems to us that the only solution, uh, but one which we haven't heard uh, proposed as yet, is that the entrance to the uh, parking lot for the proposed development come off of Navy Street. The third point is this. The Oakville Club is currently developing a master plan and that area that's currently used as a parking spot is part of that plan. We haven't just decided as exactly as to how just yet. Might be a parking structure of some sort, might be pickleball uh, court facilities, it might be something else. But we think it's important that <clears throat> Anyone who's coming to purchase one of these townhomes understands that we have that intention. And I say that because, as you can see from the diagrams, each unit has a, an outdoor terrace that looks south. And uh, that looks currently, uh, 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 units I think it was described as one through five at least, look immediately into our parking lot. They may look into something entirely different uh, up the road. And of course, we can't anticipate just now what that's gonna be, but we want to take the point right now that that is our intention with respect to that piece of property. Another issue is that <clears throat> these decks that face south, and frankly, the, the height of the, the structures themselves, uh, afford for a view uh, westerly into our pool area and uh, that gives rise to some privacy issues, which uh, are something that, of course, I'm sure that we can have discussions about to resolve, but that's something that hasn't yet been addressed. And then I have two other more specific questions or concerns with regards to parking. The first is, I don't see anything in the proposal for visitor parking for this development. We would like to, to know what the specific plan is for visitor parking in connection with the townhomes. Parking is already scarce in the area and our members, as well as the local public, have trouble finding street parking as it is. And we already don't have enough parking for our members. So we, are, that, we look at that as a very legitimate and real concern. And there's nothing, there's, there's no answers uh, that appear to jump out of the proposal as we've seen it to date. And then secondly, with regards to more specific issues involving parking, we'd like to know what the specific plan is for the parking that will be required for the many trades and contractors working during the two plus years of construction of this project. Once again, parking is very scarce in this area and perhaps the developer has a plan, but as yet we haven't heard it. So those are the concerns that we have at the present time. Subject to any questions, the, those are all my comments. Thank you very much for your detailed presentation and your concerns. I'm sure staff captured them. I'm looking to see if councillors might have, Councillor Hazlitt Thiel has questions for you. Thank you for your delegation. Um, could you just clarify for me, have you met with the applicant to go through this list of uh, questions and concerns? 
We have met with the applicant. <clears throat> We've gone through most of those concerns, but not all. Um, we haven't had any fruit from those discussions as yet, but we want to be a good neighbor. We'd like to sit down with them again and see if we can work out solutions, uh, as well as uh, staff and, and, and members of council. Um, well, I do want to thank you for being transparent about what the potential resident might be looking on to, whether it's a pickleball court or a parking garage or whatever. I think that, that it's helpful that you shared that um, tonight so that uh, it, it's on the table. Um, it, my other question is just around uh, the uh, the concern about the, the, the thought of a two-way on water. And I'd concur with you that that water is very narrow and any of us who've walked in that area go, it's very tight. Um, it, have you <coughs> ever uh, had discussions about um, reversing the one-way? Um, so instead of a two-way on water, in fact, come down, Robinson, turn and go the opposite direction uh, on water and straight up William uh, to, to address the safety concern. That is not a discussion we've had as yet. Okay. But Thank something you. that I'll take back and we will, we will have a talk about. Okay. Thank you very much for your delegation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Callahan. I wonder if you could uh, share with us how severe a parking shortage the club has for its members. Would you be able to uh, hazard a, a number of parking spots that you're short? <laughs> well, I, I will tell you that at the present time, our members are finding spaces, but oftentimes they have to drive around the neighborhood in order to locate street parking because we don't have enough to accommodate it in our parking lot and in the, in the end of King Street and that parking area there. So, or, and, and of course, we also have street parking along Water Street. So they have been able to find parking as of this point, but it's been a, an issue that we've been taking as a focus of our facilities discussions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there members of the public, either online or in person, with additional issues to identify for staff? Mr. Niblick. You didn't use all your time, so I welcome you back. Oh. Thank you very much. Um, I just had a couple of points that I wanted to clarify. Um, Ms. Has Sorry, uh, I just wanted to get a bit of clarification on a couple of points. Um, Ms. Haslett Thiel brought up uh, the landscape buffer zone, and I, I don't think I was clear on what staff was saying about that. When it came up on the screen, um, it looked to me that there is no landscape buffer between the, na the, the houses to the south and the terraces, uh, no space for trees. Am I clear on that? Well, thank you for the question. What staff showed us is that there's um, about the three and a half meter space is there. The drawings that we have do not show landscaping on it. Landscaping used to be a part of site plan as I recall the changes to, uh, from Bill 23, one of them was, I believe, to remove landscaping from site plan. So we'll have to see where we get with that. So there's a three and a half meter buffer that is built in there that currently shows us terrace, or is that? No, what we were told was that, we can put it back up, uh, Mr. Hassan, maybe you'd like to repeat for Mr. Neblick what you showed us. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Byrne. I'll see if, if you look carefully, works. there's a dashed line there. Is that where the three and a half meters is, Mr. Hassan? Yeah, sorry, through you, Mayor Byrne. I'm just trying to get the mouse to operate on my end. Maybe you can zoom in. So I see a property line with a dashed line, and then I see the terrace right beside it. I don't yeah. see three and a half meter space there. Yeah, so through you, Mayor Burton, the, the, the three meter buffer would apply to units, uh, the terraces for units six, five, four, three, two, and one. That's where the lands were added from the adjacent property to accommodate the landscape uh, buffer. Does it show that on this drawing? No, it doesn't show it on the drawing. Okay, so the terrace shows extending into that buffer yeah. currently? Through you, Mayor Burton, that'd be correct based on the way that the consent was configured, um, I believe it was back in 2010. And so we're to understand that will change? As we heard, it's yeah. under discussion. Okay, thank you. 
My other point that I just wanted to clarify that uh, OLRA position on the two-way uh, system would be from Robinson Street to the Oakville Club parking lot, not beyond that. That, that street currently one way uh, west and then curbing north would maintain its path in that direction. Uh, one of the important features here is there are heritage houses on that street as well as the Oakville Club. Uh, there's no suggestion that the road should be made into two-way the whole, the whole way. Well, thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Council. Uh, does anybody have an additional issue to identify? Council has a deal, perhaps? If not, would you like to give the indicated motion when we after we hear from the, the planners as to the issues list. If we could hear Mr. Hassan's, I just want to make sure we got them all because there were a fair number. Mr. Hassan, up. you are up. Thank you, Mayor Burton. So further again to the uh, matters to be addressed that are contained in the staff report. Based on my notes, um, staff will inquire and look into traffic and parking along Water Street, uh, special provision, provision zones being down zoned, uh, Water Street being one way with a section of, a sectional portion being two way. If the development would be subject to site plan control, trees and landscaping, um, if architectural detailing adjacent to the heritage district height and rooftop terraces can be rooftop terraces can be looked into, um, the three meter landscape buffer, uh, the location of the parking garage entrance, um, adjacent land uses and privacy concerns, visitor parking, construction management, and the potential to reverse the one way direction of Water Street. Anything else? Thank you, Mr. Hassan. Councillor has the deal. Do I have your motion to receive and forward for consideration? Um, Mr. Hassan, can you just clarify it also, just because the drawing is not clear to the public, that 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 buffer as well. Just not. Uh, I know you will do all your due diligence, but um, it does convey something different than than what we're hearing. So if you could add that as well. Um, so yes, with that, I'd, I'd move it. Thank you, Councillor. Any objection to Councillor Hazlitt Deal's motion? Madam Clerk, there being none, that carries. Thank you, Councillor Hazlitt Deal. Um, Council, the next item before us is the advisory committee minutes for the Heritage Oakville Advisory Committee minutes from February 28th. And the, uh, the matter before us is that the recommendation pertaining to items 4.1 and 4.2 of the committee minutes from its meeting on February 28th be approved and the remainder of the minutes received. Councillor Giddings, thank you for that motion. Is there any objection to Councillor Giddings' motion? There being none, that carries. Thank you, sir. Um, would someone like to move that we rise and report to Council? Councillor Elgar, thank you. Any objection? There being none, that carries. I rise and report the Committee of the Whole has met and made recommendations on consent items 4.1, 4.2, and 4.3, public hearing items 6.1 and 6.2, and advisory committee minutes item 9.1, as noted by the clerk. If we had a mover and seconder, that would be good. Councillor Knoll and Councillor Grant, any objection? Seeing none, the report is adopted. Thank you, everybody. Is there any new business of an emergency, congratulatory, or condolence nature? I have uh, a couple of items for the benefit of the public and, and their constituents, I, uh, I want to share uh, my and our condolences to Councillor Duddick for the, the death in her family. And I also uh, share my sympathies and, and wishes for a speedy recovery to Councillor Sean O'Meara, who had a little bit of accident on the ice. And uh, I'm sure he'll be right as rain, but he's going to, as I gather, he'll be in some pain for our, a little while as the healing process takes place. Anyone else? Thank you, everybody. Then uh, uh, if we could have a mover and seconder for consideration reading of the bylaws, Councillor Chisholm, Councillor Longo, thank you. Is there any objection? There being none, the uh, bylaw to confirm the proceedings of this special meeting of council has been uh, passed. And uh, that ends our meeting. It's been great working with you. and. Uh, that's the end of the meeting. <laughs>